All right, so in this video, I want to touch on the current football future of Stanford and what's going on. There's a lot of rumors possibly going to the ACC. Apparently, they turned down the Big 12. Maybe they're waiting to join the Big 10. I'm going to give my full prediction. We're going to take a look at the current situation here, taking a look at it is sad what's happened to Stanford just the past few years, not really even appearing in any of the AP polls. The last time they appeared in a poll was 2019. Preseason, they were 25th, and they fell off the table very quickly. Overall, this is a team that has struggled 3-9 and nine the past two years. In the shortened 2020, they did go 4-2, but 2019, 4-8. and eight. So right now, you look at Stanford. Are they attractive as a team? You know, going to another conference, the football program, the basketball program, it's not great. Outside of that, they've got amazing swimming. They've, they're amazing in terms of the Olympics. You take a look right now, they're third overall in national universities. Very, very elite in terms of academics. That's why I think the Big Ten still wants them taking a look at the Olympic gold medals by university. They are second there uh, in terms of total medals right behind USC. And then you can see which college football conferences have the best academic rankings. It is Stanford by far in terms of college football programs with the best. And then their viewership, this is out of 12 teams. So last year in the Pac-12, they were eighth. Again, it's more of the academics when it comes to Stanford, but I do think they are wanted. And that is why the reports out there say that Stanford turned the Big 12 down the obvious reason, it's not a good culture fit. They have a lot better academics. It doesn't make much sense in terms of total money. Is there a scenario where Stanford does go independent for a year? You know, with the whole Pac-4 situation, we don't know what's going to be happening next year. How does that conference even operate with four teams? You know, they would have to go outside of their conference to play a bunch of games. It would be really weird. I think Stanford could go independent for a year, and then I still do think there's a good chance they join the Big Ten. A lot of people asking, why wouldn't the Big Ten just add them in California when they added Washington and Oregon? Well, I think it's the same reason the Big Ten didn't add Washington and Oregon when they added UCLA and USC. It seems to be a, a, they go in stages. It's not all going to happen at once. So next summer, we could get Stanford say, look, we're going to be an independent for one year, and then we're joining the Big Ten. It might come out that that is happening. I still think based off of what's currently happened with the Big Ten developing the West Wing, with Stanford being the great academic institution, they would be very, very powerful, and the Big Ten really doesn't need any football superpowers. I mean, of course, it would be fine like if Notre Dame joined the conference or Clemson or FSU. Those are kind of the you know ideal favorites for the Big Ten right now, but it's not like the Big Ten is beating down the door saying we need to generate more revenue for this conference. They don't need a better TV deal. They've already got such a great one, and that's why they can offer Stanford a discounted rate Right now, the idea is Stanford will take 60 to 70% the first few years if they join the ACC, although those talks seem basically dead. You know, Stanford to the ACC, there's so many more bigger problems with that than Stanford to the Big Ten because the ACC doesn't have any West Coast teams. There's no West Wing out there unless they try and do something crazy with Washington State and Oregon State. It does seem Stanford, based on the current climate we have right now in terms of realignment, the Big Ten already has a ton of money. Now they're big game hunting, and it feels like Stanford, maybe even California, might be the next two teams to join the Big Ten, even if they do have to wait till next summer to possibly do it, because all the stuff with Stanford... They're very impressive, but it is kind of polarizing because Stanford, of course, not good at football or basketball at all, and they've really gone down in terms of viewership, losing Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, you go 4-8, and eight, you're not going to get very many views. Also, it is a private school, so you know maybe a little bit less popular when it comes to watching games. You can take a look at their schedule. Uh, you know, is there a way Stanford can go 6-6, six and six, make a bowl game? They open at Hawaii. 
that's a winnable game. Hawaii is normally one of the worst teams, or at least the past few years, they've been one, one of the worst teams in college football. And Hawaii is playing at a gimmick uh, complex right now, trying to get a new stadium. At USC, that's a loss. Versus Sacramento State, the FCS team, that'll be a win. Versus Arizona, that's winnable for Stanford. Versus Oregon, that's a loss. At Colorado on Friday, that's probably a loss. Versus UCLA, uh, probably a loss. Versus Washington, probably a loss. At Washington State, that's going to be tough. At Oregon State, probably a loss. Versus Cal, I mean, they could beat Cal. And then uh, versus Notre Dame to end the season, that's another reason why it seems like it would be kind of obvious Stanford would just go be an independent for a year. They're so rich they can very easily be an independent. Now, the idea, if Stanford stayed an independent, they would get a horrible TV deal with whoever, because independents are already at a discount rate anyways, you know, so them getting a TV deal, it would not go well. Maybe they just want to be independent in general, and it really doesn't matter because they have so much money, uh, but just looking at the schedule, yeah, they're not getting to six wins. There is no way on that. So right now, I would say the two big conferences you're looking at if you are Stanford, is the ACC, although that seems unlikely based on its current setup, the travel restrictions, also the idea that FSU and Clemson not really open to the idea of Stanford and California going to the ACC without Notre Dame also coming, and we really haven't heard anything. I know Notre Dame is trying to push Stanford and Cal to the ACC, but that doesn't mean that Notre Dame's going to join, so that seems rather unlikely based off of logistics. The only plausible scenario to me right now, I mean, you could say well, they should just join the Big 12, they would get the, the Power 4 status, it's easy, but Stanford has already declined the Big 12, so that to me signals that they want either the ACC or the Big 10 because of the academics, and if they can't get either one of those, you know, maybe they become independent. I also know we haven't even discussed, you know, Stanford possibly to the Mountain West. I just don't see a reason they would do that if they've already turned down the Big 12. Why would they go to the Mountain West? You know, would, would it be easy travel? There's just no way a university like Stanford or even Cal for that matter, I don't think would join the Mountain West at this point. Of course, all of this hinges on the Big 10 actually wanting to expand to 20 teams. I have also heard as I'm sure many of you have heard, that the Big Ten, they don't want to expand just for the sake of expanding. They want to bring teams on that are going to make them more money. And you can argue that Stanford really is not going to do that. It's just for academics. You know, in terms of their football, they don't offer much right now. They kind of got screwed by the whole NIL culture. That is not a program that is going to be offering kids money. And we know how recruiting is with NIL. It's a complete mess. Nobody knows what's legal and illegal. So that just causes everyone to cheat, everyone to pay players behind the table, and they all get away with it, and Stanford's just not going to do it. So their recruiting has gone way down, and the David Shaw era kind of went out with a whimper. But I do think still it is most likely that Stanford probably, you know, worst comes to worst, they're in an independent for a year or two, and then they join the Big Ten and possibly get that conference to 20 teams. Maybe even the Big Ten extends further and goes to 24 teams. The Big Ten could just stay at 18 teams, and if that's the case, then Stanford might just be fine with being an independent if they cannot get into the ACC. But they do not want to go to the Big 12. I, you hear the thing with maybe the Mountain West trying to merge with the Pac-12 to keep the Power 5 status in the Pac-12 and give all of those Mountain West schools benefits. That would be a 16-team conference. That seems illogical. I, I don't know how they would be considered a Power 5 uh, conference at that point. You would have four Power 5 teams joining essentially like 12 group of five teams. So they would be like a group of five conference. I don't think they would keep their uh, A5 status, in my opinion, there. But Stanford, when it comes to the academics, they are number one in college football right now. It's not even close. I mean, you want to include Harvard, things like that. But just when it comes to the you know, power five or power four teams, whatever you want to think about, uh, and they do have a decent stadium. You know, it is what it is. It's Stanford University. It's, it's not a big stadium, but I think if you're adding Stanford, you know this is not a really a big football investment. The other thing you have to think about if you are the ACC and ESPN tied into it, 
you know, if you do add Stanford and Cal, you are getting more late night games, which I'm sure they'd be open to. Right now, ESPN really is kind of screwed because it's like Fox controls that whole West Coast side with all of those teams going to the Big Ten. Maybe that incentivizes ESPN, and it's already been reported that ESPN is open to help pay for the travel costs that it would take for Cal and Stanford. That is a huge travel commitment. And then another aspect of this whole thing, all of these deals and all of these talks are based around college football, no other sport. And if you know how things work with college football and and college athletics, it makes perfect sense why. College football is what pays the bills for everything else. But with Stanford, they prioritize all of their other sports as well. Would they really want to have this horrible travel deal when they could just, well, I mean, I'm sure they want to. The idea is, because what I heard last year is, I heard Washington and Oregon were going to be in the Big Ten. It just takes time. They were talking to them. It didn't happen last year, but I heard it was going to happen, and it happens this year. And now what we're hearing is, you know, the original rumor before Washington and Oregon officially joined, it was Washington, Oregon, Cal, and Stanford. And they're like, okay, so it's not Cal and Stanford this year, but maybe it happens next year. So there's a lot at play, but I would say the two most realistic options right now for Stanford is joining the Big Ten or just straight up becoming an independent for the foreseeable future. You know, I don't see them doing a merger with the Mountain West. I don't see them joining the Big 12. I think the ACC stuff is almost already dead at this point with the travel issues. That is my prediction on Stanford football and the future of it. But either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description.